Hello, my name's Toby Thompson. I'm here today with Elena Doldor, who's looking at the political development process, a gender perspective. Clearly, you're part of Sue Vinicom's group and the women's studies here at Cranford University. Tell us more about the gender and the politics side of what mm -hmm. you're looking at. I am indeed part of the center, um, and it is actually what drove me to examine the topic um, my PhD deals with. Um, I started the PhD by um, looking into why there are so few women at the top and understanding what are some of the obstacles that prevent women from taking on more um, managerial roles in organizations. Um, and, and I was particularly interested in power and influence in the workplace and especially in the informal side of it, so the unprescribed part of it, um, and gender differences in this respect. So <coughs> I ended up looking at organizational politics and by organizational politics um, I essentially mean um, the informal um, exercise of power and influence. So not what you are as an organizational member, you got this remit, is like the unwritten set. The unwritten, the unwritten set. What, what should you do or what, what could I do? Yeah, ex essentially it's how to get things done and um, whom you should influence, how you should influence, um, and it's all the unwritten rules of the, of the organization and every organization has an unwritten code. So any surprises in your research? Um, many, in fact. Um, I think one of the interesting um, findings for me is that um, a lot of the managers I spoke with um, spoke um, about the positive side of politics. And it's interesting because the word politics is often uh, negatively loaded and many people think about negative sides of organizational life such as backstabbing and so on. And that side of politics definitely exists, but there's also a constructive side of politics um, that revolves around forming coalitions um, to fulfill organizational goals, to implement strategy, to impact positive change and so on. So, so they like playing a game, a game of politics, or they like what the game delivers? Exactly. They like playing a, they like playing a game, but the way the game is defined depends a lot on seniority of, of, of individuals and their experiences. So it's not a case of doing away with politics, it's just a natural part presumably of organizational life. Mm -hmm. It's a case of playing the game or it's a case of how it works for you as individuals, as, as a woman leader, as an aspiring woman leader? Well, there's the, um, it's, a, it's a good metaphor, the playing the game one, and it's one that's widely used. And I think um, so, well, what part of my findings suggest is that um, people define and engage in, in the game differently. So it's really a developmental journey that starts with perhaps naive assumptions that organizations are um, entities that work in a rational and meritocratic way, um, and then a painful discovery that that's not the case um, continues with, uh, with the realization that one has to engage in the game, that there's no opt-out essentially, um, but there's a lot of struggle in finding one's way to, to engage in it um, and, and ends up with defining the game in one's own terms, if you wish. So with very, very senior people, a manager I spoke with, um, often referred to uh, um, the idea of being authentic when engaging in politics. Um, so being, being ethical and authentic and um, honest. So a lot of positive values there associated with what we call playing the game. Quite surprising. Say some more about your methodology in your research. Mm. Um, I employed a qualitative methodology uh, with semi-structured interviews. Um, I spoke with 38 managers in two companies, one in the high-tech industry and the other one in the fast consumer goods sector. Um, and essentially I asked people about their views and experiences around politics. Um, and um, there was a, an analysis of those interviews, now that's a very laborious process, <laughs> um, that um, allowed me to um, map out th this, this developmental process I told you about and to analyze responses, to find patterns in what people said. To find so the bulk of your analysis now has been done and you're writing up it at this It has indeed, it has indeed. I am two months away from submission, so it's a very busy time. Um, I'm writing up currently and um, hopefully uh, finishing very soon. And from a philosophical perspective, how would you describe your approach? A realist, critical realist, uh, postmodernist, what, what, how would right. you describe that? Um, it, it's a critical realist approach. Um, Which you think is relevant to the, the field, I'm assuming? 
um, relevant to your uh, relevant, uh, relevant to your research right. method at least by the sound of it. Indeed, it's it's one that acknowledges that people's um, experiences and individual meaning has a role to play in how knowledge is uh, constructed. So um, this is why the qualitative exploratory interviews um, are aligned with with a philosophical approach. And and if you were to write a fantastic paper in a, in a mm. journal, what would you write? Uh, where what journal would it be? And who would the audience be? Who would you like it to land? Right. Whose desk would you like it to land on? Right. Um, well, the audience is because journals are are about having conversations with other researchers, right? Um, and the audience would obviously be uh, researchers in two fields. Uh, one is organizational politics, um, and there is a, a, a considerable body of research in that area. Um, and the other one is um, the body of gender and management and women leaders. And there's a lot of research in that area as well. But the bridge between the two hasn't been made yet, so that's perhaps what I'm hoping to add. That's my contribution to knowledge, uh, finding the link between what are currently two separate bodies of literature. Fantastic. We'll invite you back in a few years' time to say some more. Elena, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Thank you.